Good morning everybody, welcome to another video. It's the 11th of June today, and as you see behind me, I'm next to a gravel pit. This is a manor farm on the linear complex. I'm out for one last go, one last go at the tench before the river season starts on Thursday. So fingers crossed, <laughs> can have a few fish. It's not looking good at the moment. Been here for, I don't know, half an hour or so. I'm with my friend James, who's in the next swim. So we've got double chances of actually seeing some fish <laughs> in this session. We're uh, we're up on the sort of leeward end at the moment, but the wind is, you can probably see the wind's banging down the other end. It's supposed to swing around and push this way today. We're just here for 24 hours. So from 10 a.m. till 10 a.m. in the morning, 9 a.m. technically. I've come to this swim where I had the fish uh, on a previous session, had those tench a few videos ago, just in the hope that they're up here. It's, uh, it does seem a bit, up this end it does seem a little bit like the fish are here or they're not and if they're not here obviously you, you've had it the lake is full it's a booking lake you have to book on here uh, the lake's full so there won't be any moving around no <coughs> excuse me there's no um option to move at all so we're gonna make of it what we can i'm sort of got a reasonable bit of open water it's about six or seven foot out in front of me and then round to this corner here where james is fishing in here it's a lot deeper in this corner but you've got a lovely long margin to have a go at. Now, not seen anything move since we've been here at all. I'm thinking perhaps the best chance, chance for the tench is to, to get some bait out, get set up, find the spots, and then perhaps fish for them later on this evening. It's due to be sunny all day. Um, later on this evening and perhaps first thing in the morning as well, thinking I'll probably put out my carp rods during the hours of darkness just perhaps on some solid bags or something just over the area I'm fishing. I know there's, a, there's an area right here, uh, about seven wraps out, it's really close, it's only sort of 30 yards. Um, and I think that'll be the plan. I may perhaps put one rod out for the tench during the day. As I say, it's not great conditions, is it really? Middle of the day and when it's sunny. Maybe worth putting rod out on that perhaps putting a couple of zigs out perhaps to see if we can pick up a carp but i've not seen anything to tell me there's even any carp around here at the moment so we'll have to suck it and see we'll just see what happens right and what i've done as well i've brought a rake with me to do a bit of raking so i'm going to rake a spot because it's very weedy i'm going to rake a spot as far out as i can chuck the rake first off and then we'll uh we'll have a go So guys, that's a spot cleared out there, as far as I can throw that rake, which is probably only about, I don't know, 12 metres or something, <laughs> it's not that far. I can't throw it any further. And we've got a nice clear spot there between our swims, which we can both fish if you want. It's about four or five foot deep, I'd say something like that. And what I'm gonna do now is get some of this bait in on that spot and out in front of me where I know was clear a few weeks ago. What I've got in here is this, I showed you this in the last video. What that is, is some 2.3 mil manila pellets, 2.3 mil krill pellets, That's, they're both sticky baits. It's a few slightly smaller, just a very few, slightly larger, sorry, um, krill pellets and some krill active in there. And I've got some um, frenzied hemp with worm ground bait in there as well. Quite a dry mix as you can see, but I can wet that up and throw it in as balls if I fancy it. Um, but also this will go out nicely with a spod. So I'm gonna do a bit of spodding now. Just perhaps get maybe 10 spods out on the spot there and perhaps five over here. We'll just see if we can't uh, get something going. For the tench fishing side of things, which is going to be the main thing really, my main plan of attack, um, I've gone on, start this, this end, helicopter rigs. I've got some of this uh, 
called a dark matter leader on here, helicopter leader. Just changed that the bottom swivel for a quick change swivel, which I much prefer on here. And quick change swivel, I've changed in there rather than the standard swivel they put on there, so I can change hook links quickly. I'm gonna fish very short hook links, as you can see there. I'm either gonna fish these on the bottom, uh, like this one is, just on perhaps maggots or worms, worm kebab rigs, something like that, or I've got some slightly shorter ones which I can pop up off the bottom. So we're using some rig foam. I pop worms up with some, some rig foam or use some fake maggots to pop up some real maggots. Got a drenin feeder bomb on the end there. These cast fantastically. Could put lots of maggots in there. This is a large size, as you can see. It can, uh, it's about 45 grams, yeah. Get lots of maggots in there. So we'll keep working there. We can put ground bait in or whatever we want to put in there really. Rod wise, I've changed my rods over this time. If you saw the last session, you'll know I've been using my Dower pound and a quarter, pound and a quarter rods. But the amount of weed that's in here now, it's, they're not manly enough to be honest. So I've changed over. I've bought uh, my pair of Free Spirit Barbel Tamers, 12 foot, two and a quarter pound test curve rods, coupled with my Dower GSBR LT 5000. Uh, I've got a pair of those. And the other rod I've bought with me is my other barbel rod, my Dower Infinity 12 foot pound and three quarter, just there, which has got a 3000 style size of the same reel on there. Exactly the same end setup. That's gonna be my method of attack for the tench. Now, as I say, I'm, I'm very tempted at the moment to put a zig rig out. I think I might put a couple of bottom rods out for the tench to see if we get any reaction. I've not really seen anything, to be honest, that makes me think there's even any fish up here at the moment. I think we'll we'll put a, perhaps a worm kebab rig out and a maggot rig out on those two rods. And then I think perhaps we'll put a zig out because it's sort of zig weather, isn't it? I'm sure there'll be some carp cruising around, but again, not seeing anything, but it's that sort of weather when they're gonna be in the upper layers. So I think we'll do that. So we'll get these two rods out and then I'll run you through the, uh, the carp carp gear. <laughs> Great stuff. What are we fishing? Got my um, swingers on today, which I tend to use for my predator fishing. I do prefer swingers to bobbins, to be honest, so uh, I've stuck them on on the pod. Hopefully it brings a bit of luck. <laughs> right, as I said, I think I'm going to chuck a zig out. I know the depth out here is six or seven foot, so if we do chuck a zig out, perhaps five foot, somewhere around there to start with. I'm sure, just, just to try and intercept fish that are cruising around, they're gonna be on the top today, I'm sure they are. The sun has started going in and out a little bit, but I'm sure there's gonna be fish cruising around in the upper layers, so we'll, we'll get a zig in the upper layers and uh, see if we can't snare a bonus carp. So I really don't think tench fishing is gonna do anything at the moment. I've not seen any signs at all, absolutely nothing. So we'll, uh, we'll have a go with one of the rods, I think, for, for the carp. Well, actually, as well, I brought my float rod with me because, well, why not, to be honest? Um, thinking more sort of fishing out here on that spot where I've baited there. I could perhaps just fish, fish the float, a couple of maggots on. I'm sure there's gonna be some big roach and rud around. So you never know, and no one, no one fishes like that here that I've seen anyway. So I'm just wondering if chucking a float out may uh, pick us something up, just purely because no one else does it really. Fishing perhaps on the drop. We'll get, set, we'll get sorted out first, we'll get set up and stuff, and then we'll, uh, then we'll think about that, but we'll get this zig out first. 
So the zig is sorted. It's got a zig liner on there. You see that? A bit of black foam, red zig liner, and a couple of red maggots on the hook. I'm just going to put that out just sort of where I'll put those spots with the thought that uh, it sort of coloured the water up a little bit. It's going to be a couple of foot under the surface, this zig. it well hopefully one of those rods is going to rip off all right fingers crossed i should mention i got my carp gear i bought some carp rods really the thought that I'd, we would be coming here, uh, but not particularly for the carp fishing, to be honest. Um, for carp fishing, you know, during the night when the tench fish is not so productive. But I was thinking more, I quite fancy the catfish. So I'm going to try and get on St. John's before the river season starts and uh, get after a catfish over there. I did contact the Catfish Conservation Group, CCG. Uh, they've got a water very near my home. Um, and I did contact the fishery manager there by email just to ask him if uh, there was any chance of perhaps a guest session. Uh, but he never even bothered getting back to me, to be honest. So I guess that's a no. <laughs> so uh, we'll perhaps get over to St. John's after one. So I'll see it's day ticket over there. The lake's just, just over the other side of the... For those of you who don't know, you see the other side of this, this bank over there. But yeah, I'm... Uh, Fancy catching a catfish. Been on my bucket list for a very, very, very long time, but uh, never really had anywhere particularly to go and, and never really had the gear. But now I've sort of got a bit of an excuse to buy some with, with coming here. I thought we'll, uh, we'll get some gear that's up to the job. And these rods, uh, I mean, they're budget rods, but they're very nice, got very good reviews. They're Sonic Vader. X's and then sort of matching reels in 8,000 size. Uh, I did go for the cork handles, do like a cork handle. Yeah, they're uh, budget rods, but very, very nice and well reviewed budget rods. I've yet to christen them, so uh, perhaps we'll change that all today. All right, time for a cup of tea, I think. Let's turn that bombing up. There we go. Well, guys, I was just slinging a zig out to my right. I can see absolutely stacks of carp cruising. They're on the right hand side, like you'd expect in this sort of weather. I think I can cast to them from here. It's not ideal. I could go into the next swim because there's no one there at the moment, but I'm sure it's booked. I don't really want to be poaching in someone else's swim, as it were. I will double check, see if it's booked. It does look... Well, there's quite a lot of carp over there. Not that we're carp fishing, but I'd rather catch something than nothing. We have a funny old chuck from here. That's somewhere near. Not really ideal with all these bulrushes here as well. <laughs> if they were clear, I could actually put a rod across that way. Yeah, they're cruising about over here. 
And swim eight to my right and swim nine is around the corner. There's no one in either of those swims. I don't know if anyone's booked in. I'm sure swim eight was booked when I booked up. Because we were thinking about going in there. Amazing, I've seen a few fish get you all excited. <laughs> so I've got a worm kebab brig out on the tench spot out here. I'm going to put a few spods out over that. I've got this uh, zig out to my right, although there are still some fish cruising around I can see. It's nothing like it was. All right, I'm going to get the float rod out for an hour. Oh, hello. <laughs> he says that. Something, let's just move that feeder. I think it's, I think it's worth getting the float rod out on, on this bait we've got over here. To be honest, I could float fish out there, really. If I put a decent sized waggler on. There's clearly some fish out there. Might be an idea, mightn't it? I think I'm going to set the float rod up. We'll put a decent sized waggler on. See what we can do. Might be a few nice rud. <laughs> nice rud to be caught. There's something down there, certainly. Right, yes. I'm getting the float rod out. Got a nice big drake waggler on here. Fishing, uh, just very light. Got a uh, four pound main line and a Drennan red maggot hooked to nylon on the end. Let's find out what's giving us all these bites, shall we? Hopefully. Not sure I'm going to be able to catapult maggots that far. We might be able to. So we're not going to be loose feeding that far. No. We'll see what happens. We'll give it an hour. It's clearly some fish around. They're plucking away at those worms. So there's no reason why I shouldn't want some maggots. We might be able to, as I say, catch a that's a nice roach, a nice rud or something. Thinking more rud with the sun out like it is. Yeah, we're gonna struggle a bit, I think, with this. The drift is just pushing across. I think we're dragging bottom. It's just getting dragged under by the drift. Shame, really. It would have been nice to do a bit of float fishing. I shall try a little bit closer in. Nice to try it there because, like I said, I'm getting some knocks on this worm kebab rig. It would seem to be smaller fish. It'd be nice to be able to fish out, out there, but there we go. <laughs> right on cue. There we go. Tips to bounce in, look. <laughs> the tips bounce in. I wonder if I hit it when the tips bounce in. No. Nope. Yeah, there's a lot of toe on here. I think I'm better off not trying to sink the line, to be honest. Just keep mending the line as <laughs> if I was fishing the river. I shallowed up about a foot, foot and a half, and it's certainly behaving a bit better now, the float. Still a bit tricky uh, with this draw. And quite a strong flow left to right in here. Whoever named Stillwaters Stillwaters really didn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> There's certainly anything but still.
Well, we've got something now. That's a proper bite. What's this? <laughs> the culprit, I think. <laughs> Under what it is. Like a small rud or small roach or something. Ah, little perch. That would explain it. <laughs> that would explain the... Uh, <laughs> The worms being picked up. <clears throat> What's this? It feels slightly better. <laughs> Probably a slightly bigger perch. <laughs> what we got? It is a slightly, slightly bigger perch, very slightly. <laughs> well, I think we found the culprits. I don't think I'm going to be uh, too much more float fishing and catching tiny little perch like this. I thought perhaps it was uh, some nice silvers. I was actually thinking rud, to be honest. It really crossed my mind it might be perch. I'll give it a bit longer though. You never know what might turn up. Well, we're catching a few fish now. <laughs> but uh, again, it feels, feels like a small perch. It is. I think it's the same one. <laughs> I think as long as you read casting fairly free that they shouldn't be doing for Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes, yes, <laughs> <fast. laughs> I bet that's that blue tent you saw, Rob. <laughs> what a screamer. That's a bit out of the blue. <laughs> Oh God, you finally had him run. We did me up. Well, yeah, you could be the honest with mate, yeah. Well, guys, popped up maggots. <laughs> we've been sat around out of the blue. We've just seen, about 10 minutes ago, tent rolled. Well guys, we've been sat around all day, waiting. <laughs> Saw one roll and then screaming run. How about that? Wonderful stuff. <laughs> Beautiful female. <laughs> Lovely chunk, I'm not gonna weigh her, but probably, I don't know, five and a half, six pound, five and a half, something like that, I should think. Wonderful stuff. <laughs> Very happy chappy. Well, hopefully, sign of things to come. We just sat there having a chat to James and I, I said uh, I think I'm going to have a recast and I just wound the one rod in <laughs> that had worm kebab rig on it and uh, there's no worms left so I think the little perch have had all my worms and then yeah absolutely tore off totally out of the blue it's in one tench roll and it was about a oh, good rod length beyond my spot and James said that was a tench I just saw it and then well you heard just melted off 
uh, she's very well recovered now. Uh, I'll get it back, I'll get this rod back out. There's a group of tents hopefully come on over. Fab. Wonderful. So guys, the rods are out for the night. Fingers crossed, we'll have something during the hours of darkness. Obviously, you'll see me if we do. If not, I will see you first thing in the morning for a bit more tench fishing. Well, good morning, everybody. Very quiet night last night. Nothing happened at all. Aside from a family of ducks coming across my lines, waking me up. I think it's first light now, it's about 20 past four, so time to get these rods in, get the tench rods back out and hopefully snare another green monster. Well, we've got a few tents showing, but they're a good 15, 20 yards past where I'm fishing, probably right on the edge of the boundary of my swim. I don't think there's any areas to present out there either. I haven't interrogated the swim a little bit with the, with the marker rod and the lead. I think it's very, very weedy out there. As I've uh, God, just launched itself out there, right in the middle. As I've learnt with this lake though, being on showing fish doesn't really mean anything. You know, I've caught fish when they haven't shown at all. And and vice versa, really. I've not caught anything when they've been crashing all over me and rolling. It's a bit like that, this place, it seems to me. At least there's some in the vicinity. Hopefully they'll uh, move over the bait. Perhaps we'll uh, put a spot out just to encourage them. Well, as you can probably see, there's a cormorant diving all over my spot at the moment. So I think even if there was any fish there, there's not any more. He's come up with something small, but uh, it's nearly curfew time anyway, so I think I'm going to knock it on the head there, to be honest with you guys. Been an enjoyable session, nice catch up with James. Caught a fish, caught a few little perch as well. <laughs> but we caught a tench. Uh, unfortunately, James didn't have anything, and uh, I thought we'd have perhaps something during the night or, or certainly this morning, but it wasn't to be, but never mind. Roll on the river season, that's what I say. Now I may be out before the river season, just depends on work um, and how busy I am at home and with work, but uh, I think I would, I'll try and get out before, before Thursday, which is the start of the season. But for now, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that tight lines enjoy your own angling many thanks to the channel patrons for your fantastic support and i'll see you all again very soon